Welcome, welcome, welcome. What salary do we need in order to purchase a home in Mansfield, Texas? That's the question that we're answering today. Sorry, I'm kind of looking up and down. We got to got to make sure that this live stream is working okay. And God willing, we don't get shut down today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so it's working. All right, so as you're coming in, a like is going to go a long way. It's going to help distribute this information to everybody that needs to see it. So again, we're going to answer the question, how much salary, how much do we actually need to earn in order to purchase a home in Mansfield? I'm going to give you various scenarios. I'm going to give you scenarios from a real estate price. I'm going to give you scenarios on what property taxes can actually do for your, the, for your payment and also the affordability and how much you can afford, along with what the interest rate is going to do for your overall purchasing power, right? So we're going to go into various scenarios. We're going to be pretty detailed, but we are going to be going a little bit quicker than normal. So at any point, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below, but we're looking at Mansfield specifically today. So if you're looking at Mansfield, congratulations, the homework is going to be done pretty much for you. <laughs> but if you're not, you can take the same structure, the same pattern that we're covering today and apply it to an Arlington, apply it to a Dallas, apply it to a Fort Worth. At this point, we've covered I think about we've done about eight videos of this kind already on the YouTube channel. So make sure that you subscribe. So the homework might already be done on those cities as well. Um, so we're going to make sure that we cover as many of the DFW cities as possible. I believe we're going to do about 80 in this series. So make sure that you are tuned in for that as well. All right. So with that being said, let's get to it. There's a lot of there's a lot of homework that we need to that we need to get to. So let's see how much we actually need to earn in order to purchase a home in Mansfield, Texas. So we're going to start off with a little bit of data. We're going to he go here to Altos Market Research. So Altos, A-L-T-O-S dot R-E will get you right to where we're at at the moment. The reason that I like this particular website is because it gives us a lot of information that's real time. And we're going to use a graph at the very bottom to start working our math to see how much we actually need to earn in order to purchase here. All right, so as you can see, this gives you a lot of information. Don't let it overwhelm you here, but it, we're looking specifically at Mansfield real estate. We're looking at a Mansfield market to help us with our information that we need to collect here and then start doing some math. So on the right hand side, you see some real time market data such as um, the median list price, the inventory available, the rent, how many days on market, price decreases, price increases. So it gives you, like, check this out right now. 48% of the properties right now are have a price decrease. So that lets you know a little bit of the demand perspective. And here they have a little market action index letting you know, hey, is it a buyer's market or is it a seller's market? So as you can kind of see where we're at at the moment, it's getting dangerously close over here to get into a buyer's market. So it gives you kind of like an index. Well, it literally it says index, but it gives you a little sentiment of where's this market going, right? So is it a seller's market where sellers have all of the power or a lot of the power that they can yield it whichever way they want? Or is it a buyer's market where they have a pick of the litter, a pick of any home that they want basically, right? So this gives you a good indication of that. So we're not going to spend much time there. Just wanted to elaborate on what that looks like. Here in the median uh, list price is a really good visual of where prices have been going over the last five years. So as you can see here in the past five years, the average the average home was $380,000 or so. Now the average home over here is valued at $560,000. So it gives you that wide range of what it costs to actually live in Mansfield, right? Now these are averages, of course. You're going to have highs, you're going to have lowers. So you're going to have Properties in Mansfield that millions of dollars. You have price uh, properties in Mansfield that are three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars, and that's where you arrive at the five hundred thousand dollars. But really, the main reason that we are here at Altos.re, which is a free resource, it is linked down below. The reason that we are here is because of the market segments. I really, really appreciate that they the way that they break down the segments. So they break each, basically, they categorize into four. So there's four market segments the type of real estate that you can purchase, and it gives us the medium price to expect. So the reason that we come here whenever we're doing buyer discovery calls with our clients is because it gives them a good understanding of, since they most likely already have the house in mind in terms of the, the space that they need, in terms of the rooms that they need, in terms of the bathrooms that they need, it gives us this good indicator of 
what it's going to actually cost in order for us to purchase at home, right? In order for us to help uh, help them place to how place them in the appropriate in the appropriate city. So if their heart is set on Mansfield as an example, and they have a requirement of four beds and three baths, and it cannot be changed, well, we have to explore what that median price in that type of home is going to look like five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And if our max budget is $300,000 as an example, well, Mansfield might not be in the cards for this particular scenario, right? So it gives us that good indication of what that looks like. Now, if you're looking for a more standard or more traditional, the, uh, the stereotypical where most of the inventory is three beds and two baths, then you're still looking at $410,000. So again, it gives you a good understanding of price ranges. It gives you a good understanding of the type of size or the size of the home that you can purchase along with the lot and things of that nature. So if you wanted to get a four bed and four bath as an example over here, and you were looking at almost 4,000 square feet and to be on a fourth or a half of an acre, you're looking at $777,000 on the median price. Now compare that to a prosper where you would need $1.2 million. So you see that disparity in the type of property that you can purchase in this particular market in this particular city, which is Mansfield. That's why I like being here. So for our purposes today, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our most requested, at least right now, currently the way that we, the way that um, the, the calls that we're fielding, most of the calls that we get from our clients is we need a four bed and at least two and a half baths and beyond. That's what we're typically asked for. So what fits the bill here is going to be a four bed and three bath and 3000 is actually a larger home than you would typically see for this type of, for this type of home. So, which is a good thing. We're going to say we're looking, we're shooting to buy a property in Mansfield for $550,000. That's going to be our price. That's what we're going to be looking to purchase. Now, if that happens to be your goal, if that happens to be your desire, specifically in Mansfield, again, congratulations, just follow along for the ride. Take a few notes here in between and you're going to get to the outcome. <laughs> so your homework is done. Now, if your price is a little bit different and maybe if you're looking for $400,000 property, your numbers are going to change slightly, but all of the resources that you're going to see today are linked down below for you to check out. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take just one brief look. And I mean, super duper brief look at what properties in Mansfield look like. This can, this can be very valuable for those individuals that are looking at Mansfield, but may not have ever stepped foot in Mansfield. Maybe you heard from uh, another YouTube video, hey, Mansfield's a place to be, or maybe you, uh, you have a friend or a family member that you said, hey, I'm thinking about moving and being your neighbor. They're in the Metroplex, and that friend said, hey, you know what, check out Mansfield, I love that place. But you have no earthly idea what, how far or how not far your budget can go if you're looking at a $550,000 home. And you're going to you're going to be pleasantly surprised, I can already tell you cuz I'm in Mansfield pretty much every day. So, here is the inventory. There's a sizable amount of inventory. Our price range, what did I just put there? Like 500 to 600,000? No, 450 to 600,000. So, this is a type of real estate that you can purchase. I'm going to move myself for a quick second so you can get a bit of a better visual. We're going to spend maybe 10 more seconds here, I promise. But I just want to give you again a visual cue of what type of home you can purchase. You see this home right here. It's almost a brand new home, if not new. No, it is almost a brand new home. But you see a type of home that you can purchase. That's 460. That's 2,200 square feet, three bed, two and a half baths. You have a five bed over here, 460. You have a 460 over here, four bed, 3,100 square feet. So as you can see, some very proper, some really good looking homes, if I do say so myself. This is, I like this, I like this one right here. So it gives you a good visual of what we're looking at. Now this one does look like a brand new home. All right, so I know it's a very, over, like 40,000 foot view, detail or 40,000 foot view of the real estate in Mansfield. For this type, for you to actually go through and click through all the homes, that's that's something that you can do at, at your leisure. That's actually something that you actually enjoy a lot more than than even I would. So uh, well, you're going to go ahead and be able to do that. So just go to heimerstennis.exp.com and you're going to see that particular breakdown. What the highest and best use of our time today is going to be 
answering that question of how much salary you actually need to earn in order to purchase a home. So what this is, what this tool is called is our max price calculator. Now this calculator is one that I wish I had created myself. I cannot say that I did because I did not. The individual that created this calculator, this tool that we use here internally within our office to field all of our buyer discovery calls, what this tool was created by Kyle Seagraze with the YouTube channel, Win the House You Love. So make sure that you check out his YouTube channel. It's a phenomenal channel, good friend of mine, good friend of the channel overall and of or our organization. So to get this exact tool, it is linked down below for you to check out. So don't forget to grab it and do the same calculations that we're talking about today. Let me see if I can zoom in just one more clip and hopefully it doesn't hurt us along the way. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play some scenarios and then we're gonna start breaking down some information that's gonna be meaningful for you. So we talked about the price that we need to hit. We understood that we need to hit a $550,000 price because we wanna to move to Mansfield. So now we need to understand how much do we actually need to earn in order to do that. All right, so we're gonna get right down to it. For our purposes today, we're gonna to assume a 5% down. Now, can you do more? Obviously, so you could actually play around with this if you so choose. You can do a 20% down if you want in order to avoid what's called mortgage insurance, so private mortgage insurance if, you have, if you're getting a conventional loan. Down payment is what you're gonna be putting down as your, it ha is coming out of your liquid cash, the cash that you actually have on hand in order to purchase the home. Where does the rest of the money come from? Well, it comes from the loan that you that you take from the bank. So 5% down is how much equity you're gonna have in the property. 95% of that, the rest of the money in order to purchase the home is gonna come from the bank. It's gonna come from a loan that you obtain. So right out of the gate, you're gonna, you're gonna be a 5% um, owner equity stakeholder in your property and your, your loan, so your bank, is gonna own 95% of that property. Now, as you go through and start making payments, your 5% equity stake continues to rise and then their equity stake gets diminished because you're paying off the loan. All right, so view today's interest rates. Well, you can click here, which I do encourage you to click here, but I just wanna show you how easy it is. What is the mortgage interest rate today? You can just go straight to Google and find that information out. So right now you see on average, just national, nationwide, if you will, with a typical credit score. So you see if you have a more excellent credit score, as an example, your rate is going to be changing, right? So it gives you a really good breakdown. So here, we're going to, well, actually, we're going to assume a, a regular credit score. Let's just say your credit score is roughly 740. Or let's start off, let's give ourselves a little bit more more to work with. Let's say it's 7.5. I think we can agree 7.5 should be fine. So if I were to click on that, it would give me similar results, if not the exact same results, actually. So we're going to say our interest rate is 7.5%. So that is the cost of the loan. So the amount that you take, the amount that you borrow, that's called the principal, and the cost, so how much it's going to cost you in order to take that loan, that's called the interest rate. So that's the interest that you're paying on the loan. Now, how long is the mortgage? You can do a 10, 15, 20, 30, there's even 40 year loans now, but the standard where most of folks land is a 30 year mortgage loan. Now, can you pay off the property before that? Yes, you can make additional payments towards the principal throughout, throughout the months, throughout the years and pay your mortgage off a little bit sooner. There's no penalty for doing that. Now your property interest, uh, property tax rate, this is the third component of your mortgage payment. So whenever you get the bill in the, in the, in the mail, so whenever you get your mortgage pay, um, mortgage bill in the mail, there's four components to your, to that, to that payment in, I would say 90 plus percent of the situations if you're getting a loan. So the first thing is the principal, so how much you, you're paying towards principal, how much you actually borrowed. The second part of that loan, the second part of that payment of where it's going to be allocated goes to, towards the interest. At the beginning of your loan, you're paying a substantial amount more towards the interest than you would for the principal. The third part of that, of that amount that you're paying per month is going to go towards property taxes. Oftentimes, especially if you do 5% down and are not doing above 20%, 
then you don't get the option. You're going to be paying your property taxes in a prorated fashion, meaning you're going to be paying your property taxes every single month. And the servicer will put that amount in escrow and pay the taxes on your behalf. Right. So, well, I say in escrow, they're using it and leveraging it for something else <laughs> and they're earning money off of it. Just com being completely upfront with you. But at the end of the day, they're paying the property taxes for you whenever, whenever they're due um, every single year. So that is again, a portion of let's a portion of your payment, which you'll see here, uh, the breakdown of what that looks like. A portion of your payment goes to do that. Now, the fourth part, which I'll kind of advance here is your home insurance. So your home insurance is also going to be included in your monthly mortgage payment. That too is something that is stored up by your or collected by your mortgage service or the, the entity that's actually servicing your loan and will get paid towards the home insurance provider of your choice, oftentimes. So those are the four components. Now, why do I share this? Because property taxes and home insurance are two things that are variable. When you take out your loan, oftentimes you're going to get what's called a fixed mortgage rate. That means that that mortgage rate is not going to change. So you're going to be able to count towards the very last penny what goes towards principal, what goes towards interest. And you're going to be able and you're going to have that calculation throughout the 30 years. Like you can see it right here right now as soon as you create this, you're going to be able to see that. What you're not going to be able to see <laughs> is how much you're going to be paying in property taxes in 10 years from now, in 20 years from now. That is going to change. It's going to depend on if the property tax rate changed, which does happen from time to time in, in different cities. What you're also not going to see is the, uh, what you're also not going to see is how much your value is going to appreciate or depreciate in terms of, or the value of the home. Most of the time it's going to appreciate. It's going to go up in value. So your assessed value of how much your county actually assesses the taxes on so your property tax determines your property tax liability with that is going to change now why am i going through all this again your property tax rate matters your home insurance matters so those two things are going to change and they can affect more on the property tax side they can change they can affect your monthly mortgage payment by hundreds of dollars it can be that drastic so i want to prepare you and i want to equip you with this information so we don't get lost on, along the way what is the property tax rate in Mansfield, Texas? So what am I doing right now? I am literally going and finding this property tax rate for you. You can get a, um, you can get a general overview of what the average tax bill is for Texas, but why would you when you can get the exact amount and you're seeing it right here right now? And we're going to get into, I'll explain it what that looks like here in two seconds, but I want you to be a, with this information so we're going to go here to where are we property tax where are we property tax this right here this is perfect so you see this is exactly what i was talking about in 2022 it your property tax rate was 2.559 and it dropped 0.2 percent which is a drop no 0.02 percent no yes yeah, 0.2 percent so 2.31 is your tax rate right so I'll back out over here because typically the uh, typically the websites don't play nice with my software and they tend to freeze me out and I have to start the live stream over again. <laughs> so for our purposes today, I'll kind of fa flash forward real quick. 2.31, rem remember that number because we're going to need it. And then remember these five things because we're going to break them down here shortly. All right, so... With property taxes, you're going to generally in most cities here in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, you're paying five distinct prop, uh, taxes or paying five distinct rates, um, depending on where you are. So first, you're going to pay the city city rates, so the city tax, then the county. Well, actually, you can actually see it right now, right? I mean, I'm sharing the screen. Let's see if we can play it. All right. So you're going to pay the city tax. You're going to see the ISD. You're going to see the uh, uh, the county tax. So he, Mansfield's in Tarrant. And you're going to have a hospital tax. Not all cities have this, by the way. Like as an example, I believe in Frisco, you won't have this. In Tarrant, so essentially higher education. So a community college. 
So you're going to generally look at five distinct rates. So five distinct entities. Now, the one that's going to have the, that's going to be the most expensive, that's going to carry the highest portion of your property tax bill is the ISD one. So your ISD, regardless of where you are in the, in the, in the DFW Metroplex is going to be your highest. Your second highest is going to be the city and then the count. Well, that depends the county or the di hospital district kind of go hand in hand. But anyway, those are the five things that I wanted to show you. Let me X out of that again. I don't want to, I don't want to push my luck because it didn't boot me out of the software, even though we're on that website for a bit. Again, those five things, you're going to have the city, you're going to have the ISD, you're going to have the county, you're going to have the hospital and you're going to have higher education in most cases. So the first three that I mentioned, you're going to have in all the cities throughout the DFW Metroplex come heck or high water because you're going to have the city tax and you're going to be in a county and you're also going to be having access to an ISD. The other two, the hospital and or the higher education tax, you're not going to see in all the cities that you move into. So that's why it's important that you actually know the average. And now why do I go through all this trouble of explaining property taxes, even though property taxes are the most boring thing that you can ever think of ever. Well, if you just go based off of the average of Texas, well, if you go to this map, which is absolutely factual, absolutely right, it's not going to tell us the entire, it's not going to tell us the entire story, even though this is a national, like this is a taxfoundation.org, it's a national organization and it tells you that the average rate is 1.6, which is absolutely true. That's the average of Texas, but you're not living in the average of Texas. You're living in Mansfield. <laughs> So we understand that the average comes from somewhere. It comes from en entities or people paying less than 1.6 or whatever that rate was and people paying higher than that. In this case, you're paying higher than that, right? So it's important that you understand where to go and get this information. It's just a Google, Google search away and then apply that information to what you're looking to purchase. All right. So let me know if you have any questions on that because I spent a lot of time with it. But I think it's super important. If you get nothing else of this video, even though we're going to get to how much you actually need to earn, if you get nothing else from this video, it's important that you understand this property tax rate um, item because it has the highest um, it has the highest implications, or this is going to be the most variable for one, and it's one that we often overlook. Even though property tax rates, regardless if you have a loan or not, are being paid, or property taxes are being paid, regardless if we have a loan or not. If we pay the if we buy this house straight cash and and hand over five hundred and fifty thousand dollars, we're still paying property taxes, so that never goes away. All right, so yearly HOAs on a property of five hundred thousand dollars, four hundred is a little bit excessive, so we're gonna I'm sorry, eight hundred is a little bit excessive, so we're gonna put about four hundred dollars for the HOAs. Now with Mansfield, you're gonna have a good amount of communities that do have an HOA, but you're also gonna find homes that are not in HOAs. So just as a quick heads up, if you move into a city especially here in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, that is a relatively fast growing city that has a lot of new build construction, which Mansfield does, by the way, a lot of new build construction. You can expect 80% of the homes that are being built new right now are going to fall under an HOA jurisdiction. Don't ask me why, it's just the thing. So HOAs at this point have pretty much dominated the new build scene. So if you're buying new, chances are you're paying an HOA every year. So here I'm giving you the a reasonable HOA fee for the year in Mansfield specifically. All right, so here's where we get into the actual calculations, where we get to play around with some of our income. So you know how much you're making per year, hopefully, and you also know how much debt you have, hopefully. <laughs> so we're going to need to play around with those two numbers. So here we have two scenarios. You're going to, if you are trying to qualify yourself and also have a co-borrower, so a spouse or somebody else that's going to be on the loan with you, you're able to input both scenarios here. For our purposes today, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep it light and we're just going to go with our yearly gross income. So for our purpose today, we're going to say we make a hundred, oops, we're going to say we make a hundred thousand dollars. So treat this as a single income or if it's two incomes, just you, that's fine. But anyway, $100,000 to start off our scenario. And we also need to back out any debt. So any car loans, any student loans, any uh, credit card loans, if you are paying child support, whatever loans, whatever debts you have, you're gonna include here. Now, this gives you a good breakdown of what is considered debt and what is not considered debt. So you understand the differences there. So if you have debt, 
go ahead and put them down here. There's spaces for that. So make sure that you do that for our purchase today. We're not going to we're not going to complicate it any more than we need to. So we're going to assume that we have a hundred thousand dollar income to play with and we don't have debt that we've paid off our car loan, our car loan. And we have a car that's been with us for 20 years and that we uh, finally paid off our student loans after 30 years of working towards doing that. And that we have, every time we get a credit card bill, we pay it at the beginning of the month. If that's you, awesome. Congratulations. That's fantastic. If that's not you, that's not you input your information that's specific to you. Again, this is linked down below for you to apply to your specific scenario. So for our purpose today, we're making hundred K life is good. We're going to try to buy a house in Mansfield, understanding our little variables here. So let's see what we get. All right. So here's what happens. So again, when the house you love is the creator of this tool. So make sure that you go and check out the YouTube channel. So, you um, don't miss a beat. So I'm going to move this over here so this does not get covered up by my by my uh, camera. I right, so don't get too don't get too married to this two hundred thirty eight thousand dollars because you think you might be thinking if I make a hundred thousand dollars, how can I only afford a two hundred thirty eight thousand dollars? Well, I'm sorry, two hundred thirty eight thousand dollar home. Well, hear me out. There's gonna there's a reason for that, and I'm going to explain how you. That's actually not the amount. I'm going to give you some other scenarios here, but I want to explain to you where this is coming from. So based off of this suggestion, the max price that you could purchase would be $238,000 on a conservative, and I mean super conservative risk level. This is giving you a debt to income ratio that is not going to feel like is strangle holding you every single month where you feel like I want to really tell that boss to stick it up there, but, but. I really got to make the payment for the house next month. So I'm not going to say anything. If that's you, start looking for another job. But anyway, so this gives you a good idea of um, you know, the max price that you can earn, that you would need to, the max price of the home that you would be able to purchase, assuming that you have that level of income. Now, we'll talk about some different scenarios here shortly, but I just want to give you an idea of if you were going to purchase a home for this amount, this is what that down payment would look like. If you were going to purchase that this type of home for $240,000, basically, the estimated closing cost would be this. And this is where we break down those elements of the mortgage. So you have the principal and interest, you have property taxes, homeowner's insurance, mortgage insurance. So remember when I said, hey, we're going to do 5% as opposed to 20%. And I said, if you were to do 20%, you avoid mortgage insurance. This is what I was talking about. Because you did not have at least 20% down, meaning you didn't have 20% owner equity stake in your home. That means that the bank is taking a bulk of the risk. And for them taking that bulk of the risk, they're, they're requiring a premium on that risk. So this is where that mortgage insurance comes from, which is typically 0.6% or so, um, depends, but 0.6% additional interest points. So they're collecting every single month until you can get above that 20% equity ownership. They're going to keep assessing that additional premium, that mortgage insurance until they think, Hey, you have enough skin in the game. Now we, um, we, we can, uh, we're not going to charge you that additional mortgage mortgage insurance any longer because you are at least 20% owner equity in your property. Does that make sense? If you have any questions on that, let me know down below. So that is something that you're going to be paying every single month. That's something that's going to be included in your payment every single month. Now, the homeowner's insurance, this is something that is not going to be paid through your mortgage payment, through your mortgage statement. This is going to be paid at the beginning of the year. You are going to get an email or if you have an access to a portal or you're going to get a letter saying, hey, these are your dues for the year. Go ahead and pay this straight cash. That's how it's going to happen. So it's going to be paid outside of your more monthly mortgage payment. All right. So now let's get into the various scenarios. So don't don't freak out on me. So you're thinking, oh man, I thought I could afford a little bit more with $100,000. Well, you can. That's the good thing. What I gave you and what we shared with you here was a conservative risk level. Again, this doesn't feel like you are just so like I have to I have to work overtime just to make ends meet. So here it gives you different scenarios. So if you were going to do so if you wanted to up your risk level, meaning if you were comfortable taking a higher debt to income ratio, so how much you actually owe in debt or how much debt you have to service every single month, including the mortgage mortgage payment to how much you're making, 
If you're comfortable with a higher risk level, if you're comfortable with a higher debt ratio, then look at a moderate max price. So it means whenever we're talking about moderate uh, uh, price, you, you could purchase a home for $307,000, which means that you're taking out a larger amount of, of loan. It also means that you're paying a larger amount in your monthly mortgage payment. So you see here, if you do that, it's going to be $3,000 a month, right? So this means that it's 47% of your net income every single month. Now, can you be a little bit riskier? Of course, there's going to be a lender that approves you for this and then some. So if you can get a little bit riskier, if you feel that your risk tolerance is fine at a 59% of your net income, you can purchase a home for $385,000 and it would be $3,750 $3, per month. Now, the riskier that you get, Obviously, there's more risk. That's obvious. But also understand that in order to qualify for these other loans, you need to have a really good credit score. We're talking about 780. We're talking 800. We're talking pristine credit score all the way to 850, which is the max. So simply because we have this listed out doesn't mean that it's going to be a guaranteed. Would you be eligible for them? Would you find a lender that will qualify you for these loans? Most likely, but they are going to require they are going to require a really good credit score and they they're also going to require something well yeah it's credit score is primarily what they're going to look like all right so just want to make sure that you're aware of that now we're going to go back and we're going to recalculate things this is where this is where the guest and te guest test and revise i remember that in school what we're going to do is we're going to say hey what if i make 125,000 right so we we went out there and we we um we asked for that raise and they gave it to us. All right, so congratulations. You have a raise. Now you're making 125,000. Now your max price gets up to 300,000. I didn't I don't remember how much we actually put what's that? $70,000 more, $60,000 more. So now on a conservative level, we're just going to play here on the aggressive side. We're a little bit aggressive or no, let's go moderate just to be very comfortable where we're at. Assuming a 5% down Remember, we're talking about a 5% down. Now, if you delay, just give me a little bit of a heads up. Let's see. If you delay um, your, your purchasing, let's just say you have just enough down, you're doing 5% down, but you want to save some money and say, hey, I want to get into this property. I want to buy a home, but you know what? I want to save more money. I don't want to ask for that much amount. I don't want to ask for that much from the bank. I'm going to save, let's say 20%, which is a substantial amount. I, I recognize that, but just to give you an idea of how things would change. Now you're looking at 450,000. So it was a $50,000 swing upward. So if you can hold off and do 20% down, I recognize that that's 15%. That's it's a substantial amount that would actually be more than the $50,000 that you gained, but just give you an idea of what you can do to, to change that. Now let's go back to the 5%. So remember, we're over here playing with some numbers, right? So we're looking at 385. Just remember 385 for the purposes of our next scenarios. Let's just say, hey, um, interest rates are coming down. Or let's say, hey, I went down to uh, DR Horton. I went down to Lennar. I went down to Bloomfield. I went down to KB Homes. I went down to, these are all builders that are building in the city of Mansfield. I went down there and they said, hey, um, we can actually lend you, uh, or John Houston is another a really good builder. We can actually, we can actually, you if you want to use our mortgage lender, you can actually get a locked in rate at 6% right here, right now. So you're thinking, well, if I go to just the natural, what's available in the national averages right now, and just in the ger general public, and I can get 6% down, why wouldn't I do that? Exactly. Why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> That's, I'm subtly hinting at, that's a really good option for you to go new construction. While you're, while new construction typically is going to be more expensive because it's a brand new home, when you're looking at the financing options, it might make better sense for you to pay a little bit more in, in, the, in the property, get all these warranties, get into a brand new home, and also get a better interest rate because a lot of the in-house lenders and or lender partners that the, that the, um, that the builders work with can offer you a significant better interest rate. So let's just say you can lock in a 6% in today's environment, which is not a bad rate. So we're going to go over here. 
So remember that was 380, right? I think is what it was. Now you're qualified for 420, 426. Okay. Now, if you wanted to get into the aggressive side, you're almost there. You're practically there. You're almost there at that 550,000. But let's get back to real life and get to the answer real fast. So again, if we're doing 5% down and we're looking at today's rate, if we made 150,000, can we make enough? Will we have enough to buy a home? And in this case, yeah, you would. In this case, you're looking at between a moderate and aggressive risk tolerance, which with assuming a, a decent credit, a good credit, actually not decent, a good credit, credit, you would get into that home that you're looking for in Mansfield. So this gives you a good idea of how much you would need to earn at to, in today's in today's prices, in today's economy, in today's everything, in order to purchase a home. Now here's here's a, a little nuance. I'm giving you a very conservative route to model. Could you make less and afford the home? Yes, you could. Absolutely. A hundred percent for several different reasons. One, the down payment, you can adjust up or down depending on your savings. Interest rate. I just mentioned that there's a way to actually go to a new build and get a significant lower interest rate than what you would find in the market because they offer those types of things, right? The Also, another big assumption that I made here was that the property tax rate is 2.3%. Of uh, 2.3, I didn't put one, but 2.3. And while that is true, this is nuanced. I know I'm going into so many little rabbit holes here, but I'm just giving you, I'm giving you a very good, favorable scenario, a realistic scenario to where when you go and try to execute on this, you're going to be more pleasantly surprised because I gave you a very conservative scenario to where if you make a little bit less, you're going to find that you can actually still purchase. But anyway, with property taxes, I gave us the property tax rate of 2.3 i should have put one but 2.3 i gave us that as a property tax rate however when you purchase a home even if it's five hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is what we see here oops sorry of what we are shooting for even if we were trying to purchase that property and we purchased it at five hundred and fifty thousand dollars, chances are that the tax assessed value Keep in mind, I'm talking assessed value. That's very important when we're talking about taxes. The assessed value is probably substantially less than 550, meaning that the tax, the value that the county sees in your home is actually less. So they're charging you less. So instead of paying this 2.3% on the $550,000 that your home is actually marketed at and is actually valued at in the, in the real world, the property tax is assessing it substantially less. It could be, uh, there could be tax, they could be taxing 480,000, 450,000, 490,000. It could be substantially less. I know I just opened up a, a huge can of worms, but I just wanted to give you some different ideas. It, the best way that I can explain this is, well, the best thing would be to reach out to us and we can break down these scenarios and look at property by property and really give you a good understanding of what it looks like in order to, for you to purchase a specific uh, a specific property. We do those buyer discoveries all of the time. So at any point, just let me know. And also our contact information is down below. We have a list of preferred homes down as well, down there as well. So make sure that you grab this, grab this particular tool, this calculator. It is linked down below so you can check it out. But also scroll down here and see the different types of loans that are available. It gives you some very valuable information that you can factor in some additional costs. You can factor in, hey, how much is it going to cost me for utilities and maintenance? So you can really truly see almost down to the penny how much you would be paying on a property and how much an upswing or downswing of purchase prices whenever you're negotiating, how much that could affect your, your payment along with how much you would be paying on the loan altogether. So much really good information here that you absolutely want to check out. And it gives you a good understanding of how to calculate all of these numbers. So you can be informed when you're purchasing what most likely is going to be the largest asset that you're going to own in your life. It is for me, by the way. So if at any point, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Check out our tool, uh, our calculator down there. Check out get to hit that subscribe button because if you're looking at Mansfield or any other city in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, we are going to be doing breakdowns like this for all of the, all of those cities. So make sure that you are there to check them out. See you on the next one.